Well, there's a number of reasons for using cooperative learning, but I think that the foremost is that uh, in almost any circumstance, it can produce superior learning outcomes uh, for students uh, over particularly traditional uh, lecture formats. Several years ago, a colleague of mine and I designed a large enrollment introductory computing class uh, that focused on computing for non-computer science majors. The uh, class appealed to 65 different majors, and the students in that class had a variety of incoming expert experiences with computers. We used cooperative learning uh, extensively, almost exclusively, in this uh, environment, and we did so for a number of reasons, but the primary one was that in this context, we had students working with different partners every day, and in Vygotsky's terms, uh, one of these students would be the more knowledgeable other in the zone of proximal development. And so by rotating around one day, I'm the person that needs the additional help and my partner knows more than I do and the next day I know more than my new partner does and uh, that that's a very powerful way of reinforcing the learning that's going on for both students. It isn't just that, oh, I'm as the more knowledgeable other telling you how to do this, but if I can't explain it clearly then I understand where my own lack of knowledge is. Um, in this context, again, there are students who are using computers to solve problems, and so two heads are almost always better than one in that context, and it develops a number of other uh, attributes that employers are all looking for, the ability to communicate clearly uh, with one another being one of them. Well, I can't recommend this book too highly. <laughs> uh, it's an excellent uh, reference, uh, really useful. It provides both the theoretical uh, rationale for why one would want to use cooperative learning and also uh, provides a really detailed set of ex uh, concrete examples. So it's not just a theoretic work and it's not just a workbook, but it does give you both, uh, both perspectives that are very useful. There's a wide range of cooperative learning activities that you can select from and it's really important to, to select the activity that is aligned best with your learning goals for your course. And so those will differ by course and by discipline, so it's important to do that. It's also important to establish a culture of cooperative learning in your classroom. Um, if you're going to make extensive use of cooperative learning, you're not going to do this just occasionally, but even if you're going to do it occasionally, investing the time to explicitly focus on how to interact in a cooperative learning group is a really important use of your time. Uh, the biggest mistake that most faculty make is they just tell students work together and assume that the students know what that means, there's no structure, and um, under those conditions that results in the experiences that most students will report, which is they had bad learning experiences in groups. And so it's important to uh, pay attention to the dynamics of the group and the structure of the learning activities so that uh, you have the best possible outcome.